Out of 3,500 people who have been awarded the Medal of Honor in American military history, only one of them has been a woman. When the Civil War broke out, Dr. Mary Edwards Walker made her way into the battlefield. She risked her life every day and helped save the lives of countless soldiers during the war, regardless of their political alliance. Although she was hired as a nurse, Walker was eventually recognized as the first female surgeon in the U.S. Army. She's also one of only eight civilians who have been awarded the highest military decoration, only to be revoked and restored years later. Mary Edwards Walker Mary Edwards Walker was born on a farm in upstate New York on November 26, 1831. The youngest of seven children, Walker's upbringing was unconventional for the era. Her parents, Alva and Beshta, were progressive citizens who believed in equality for all mankind and were fierce opposers of slavery. This ideology was the basis of her rebellion and nonconformity against stereotypical gender roles. The Walkers also believed in gender equality and wanted everyone to be granted the same rights and opportunities. Their family was also modeled with non-traditional roles. Vesta would routinely work on the farm doing heavy field work, while Alva would do the housework. Mr. Alva, a self-taught physician, disliked traditional female garb, as he believed it was unhygienic and impeded correct circulation. Thus, all five Walker sisters grew up wearing pants and other comfortable and practical outfits just like their brothers. Mr. and Mrs. Walker wanted their daughters to receive the same quality of education as their sons. Hence, the family founded the first free schoolhouse in Oswego on their family land in the late 1830s. After finishing elementary school, Mary attended the Folly Seminary in Fulton. This institution fit her parents' beliefs on progressive reform and gender equality in education. A doctor in the family. After her high school graduation, Mary Walker became a school teacher. During her free time, she would read her father's texts on biology, anatomy, and physiology. Her exposure to medical literature inspired her to become a physician. After saving up enough money to pay for tuition with her salary as a teacher, Mary enrolled at the Syracuse Medical College, where she was the only woman in her class. Walker graduated as a doctor with honors in 1855 after completing three 13-week-long semesters. She was the second woman to graduate there after Elizabeth Blackwell, the first woman to receive a medical degree in the United States. That same year, Mary Walker married fellow med school student Albert Miller. At the simple ceremony, Walker wore a T-length skirt with trousers underneath refused to say the word obey in her vows, and maintained her own last name. The newlyweds then set up a joint practice in Rome, New York. However, the business did not flourish, as female physicians at the time were not trusted nor respected. After divorcing her husband due to infidelity, Walker briefly enrolled at the Bowen Collegiate Institute in Iowa in 1860. She was eventually suspended for refusing to resign from the university's debating society, which until then consisted of only men. Walker preferred to dress in men's clothing. A big fan of top hats, coats, and trousers, the doctor became the target of mockery, abuse, and ridicule from patients and civilians alike. A New York Times reporter once described her as, quote, that curious anthropoid. She was also arrested frequently due to her non-conforming actions. However, when asked about her choice to wear men's clothing, she would often reply, quote, I don't wear men's clothes. I wear my own clothes. A suffragist in the field. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Mary Walker attempted to join the Union Army, but was rejected due to her gender. Walker was offered the role of a nurse, but she declined and chose to volunteer as a civilian surgeon for the Union Army instead. Still, because the Army had no female surgeons, she was only allowed to practice as a nurse at first. Her first post was in Washington, D.C., at a temporary Army hospital. As a fierce advocate for patients' rights, she offered counsel to injured soldiers about their right to refuse limb amputation. If Walker found a soldier facing amputation, she would not risk getting fired or imprisoned and examined the wound herself. In a later interview, Walker stated, quote, In almost every instance, I saw amputation was not only unnecessary, but to me it seemed wickedly cruel. While on duty, Mary Walker continued to push against society's gender norms. Instead of wearing a traditional nurse garb, she donned bloomers and trousers. She eventually fashioned her own modified version of a Union medical officer's uniform, complete with a calf-length skirt over trousers. Walker purposely wore her hair long and curled, so no one would forget she was a woman. She saw her clothing not merely as a statement, but as a form of convenience, allowing her to move around easily and tend to the wounded. As a suffragist, 
Walker was delighted whenever she got the chance to meet other women serving in the war, and was one of the witnesses who alerted the press about Frances Hook, a woman who fought in the Union forces disguised as a man. During her first post in the war, Walker also helped establish an organization to help women travel to Washington to visit their wounded husbands, brothers, and sons. She also served at the First Battle of Bull Run in July of 1861. Surgeon Walker After serving for over a year during the Civil War, Walker wrote a letter to the War Department in September of 1862 requesting to work as a spy, but her proposal was declined. In the meantime, Walker never stopped petitioning to be recognized as an official Army surgeon. In 1863, she wrote to Secretary of War Edwin M. Stanton. When he refused, she addressed President Lincoln directly, asserting that the commission had been denied solely due to her gender. That same year, she was hired as a contract acting assisted surgeon by General George Henry Thomas from the Army of the Cumberland in Ohio. She then became the first female surgeon to serve in the U.S. Army. Dr. Mary Walker was given $766.16 for her service and provided a pension lower than those of Civil War widows. She also frequently crossed the battle lines to help anyone who was injured and treated civilians to medical care. Capture On April 10, 1864, just as she finished helping a Southern doctor perform an emergency amputation, Dr. Walker was arrested by Confederate troops and charged as a spy for crossing the lines. Walker was sent to the Castle Thunder Prison in Virginia. As a prisoner of war, she refused to wear the outfit provided for her and chose to wear pants instead. Her androgynous appearance caused a commotion among the soldiers, some of whom recorded it in their diaries. According to one Confederate captain, quote, The crowd was both amused and disgusted at the sight of a thing that nothing but the debased and depraved Yankee nation could produce. She was dressed in the full uniform of a federal surgeon, not good-looking, and of course had tongue enough for a regiment of men. Walker became a free woman on August 12, 1864, when she was released as part of a prisoner exchange consisting of 14 physicians. Medal of Honor After Dr. Walker was released from prison, she requested to serve as the official surgeon for female prisoners of war in Louisville, Kentucky, still under the title of Acting Assistant Surgeon. After four short months, Walker became frustrated with both prison officials and patients who questioned her medical treatment. She was then transferred to the refugee home in Clarksville, Tennessee, where she treated wounded soldiers once again. When the Civil War ended in 1865, Walker and her supporters continued writing letters to President Lincoln, asking him to appoint the doctor as a commissioned officer. However, after John Wilkes Booth took Lincoln's life, President Andrew Johnson did not believe he had the power to provide a military commission. Instead, he gave Walker the Medal of Honor for her efforts to treat the wounded. Walker was honored by the award, as she believed she had been recognized because of her bravery in crossing enemy lines to tend to the suffering civilians and even Confederate soldiers in a time when no other Union medical officer dared to do it for fear of being arrested. But as the United States joined World War I in 1917, the Medal of Honor criteria became restricted to those who had engaged in actual combat, resulting in over 900 medal withdrawals, including Walker's. However, the doctor refused to return her medal and continued to affix it on her clothes, wearing it proudly until her death in 1919 at the age of 86, just one year before the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, ensuring women the right to vote. Walker was buried at the rural cemetery in her hometown of Oswego, New York. Her funeral was simple, with an American flag draped over her casket and wearing her favorite black suit and tie. Posthumous Reinstatement In the 1920s, a campaign to restore Dr. Walker's Medal of Honor was set in motion in her hometown. Word quickly spread about the brave woman who had saved countless lives on the front. Still, it wasn't until the 1970s that the matter was brought before Congress by Ann Walker, a distant niece of the doctor. According to the petitioner, quote, Dr. Mary lost the medal simply because she was a hundred years ahead of her time, and no one could stomach it. Finally, in 1977, 60 years after Dr. Mary Walker's Medal of Honor withdrawal, President Jimmy Carter restored her decoration. Her new citation recognized her for, quote, distinguished gallantry, self-sacrifice, patriotism, dedication, and unflinching loyalty to her country, despite the apparent discrimination because of her sex. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting stories about war heroes. And let us know in the comments below if you knew about Dr. Mary Walker.